Are you as curious as I am at how much a Grigri breaks, or if I can even do it? And since I have this birdie, we might as well test this too. Stay for the shenanigans. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx and welcome to a Slack Snap episode. You guys have been requesting this for a while. I'm gonna put a thinner rope in this Grigory, which I imagine it'll slip, but who knows? And then we'll put a thicker rope, which I also think it might break the rope before. I don't know. People have given me suggestions on how to put a rope in here, pull on both sides, and then like just destroy the crap out of this. That's what we'd love to do here. Let's go test these things. Okay, what we have here is a 20 foot rectangle with a hydraulic held back by a slack line. And the paracord keeps it from recoiling. Span set is nice for extending things. And we added these bolts in this paracord to kind of help this new dynamometer not go flying. Not because I'm too worried about this itself, but I want to make sure we keep this nice and um, not bent. And then we just kind of, I don't know, for nostalgia, still have this dynamometer in the system. This was our first one because I thought everything was going to break it. 50,000 pounds. But now we have the Labjack T7 Pro and uh, it's battery powered so we can do lots of different things with it. And once we have our Kipling set up, we have our dynamometer number. So uh, let's test this guy. What I have here, this rope is somewhere between, it's not quite eight and it's like, like an eight and a half, which is basically the low end of what this Grigri can handle on the specs. So pulling on this doesn't really, you know, I guess it just slips a lot. But what I'm gonna do is lock it off when I push the in button and make sure that it holds. Perfect. And now uh, I'm not gonna stand here while we do this. So. <laughs> oh, it's slipping at 2.98 kilonewtons. Looks like it wants to break though. Oh, that's crazy. Well, let's see what happens if uh, I'm gonna hold this here and then we're to see if it breaks. Oh my God, I can't hold it. 3.40 kilonewtons while I held it, but I couldn't hold it strong enough to break it. Look, scientific equipment could be in a rave. Wow, wow that, ooh, should we measure the difference between that one and this one? Nah. I really don't wanna to touch this. Wow, it's about seven millimeters stretched out. And if I'm not stressing it out, we are still able to move it around 8.2, 8.4. Ooh, science. Okay, this is a 10 millimeter rope from Black Diamond. And you can see this has one kilonewton on it already. 10.3, and I have the packaging. So I know this is a 10 millimeter. I just tested another part that said 11. Interesting. 10 and the part that's already kind of stressed out, more than 10. All right, let's find out what 10 does. Whoa, 7.30. It slips. Wow. Okay, I'm going to hang on to it. Oh, I can't. Wow, this thing is hot and slightly glazed. I don't know if I have an 11 millimeter. Okay, so I realized I had this short piece of pit rope, 11.62, I don't know, it depends where you measure it. 11.09, there's an 11. All right, let's see if this will uh, even fit. It says it'll take an 11 on there, so. The hydraulic is the man, the dyno is the hand. Put that in there. I'll push the end button. Oh, no. Why is it? Wait, why is it slipping? Stop. 6.2? Come on. Break. 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 <clears throat> Damn. Before. After. That's dirty. And that's interesting. <laughs> If you're excited about the drop tower, put that in the comments below because we can get four or five or even six kilonewtons when a whipper happens when you're catching somebody. But this thing seems to slip at that rate and that's interesting. 
super worth retesting all this to find out what happens when we drop something super, super, super heavy, uh, if it slips or if it grabs. Um, but that'll be after we get the drop tower. But for now, the slow pull test is super interesting because sometimes we'll use screw grease for tensioning. There's many applications where I've used this kind of stuff in a slow tension, slow pull setup. But anyways, I want to see the Grigory break. So we're going to just do something that's probably not what it's designed for. We're going to tie the tail off. Uh, we'll tie the tail off behind as if you're like really, really breaking it or Z-dragging it since me just hanging on to it's not working. And then if that doesn't work, we'll just kind of make a U-shape and just break the Grigory. So the tail is tied off behind the dyno so we don't get some weird reading. Ooh. Oh no, it's slipping. I wasn't expecting that. I would have turned on the slow motion if I thought that was going to do that. That plastic or whatever part broke went everywhere. Holy shit. The guts came out. Uh, wow. Where would it... I heard a lot of noise come over here. It's not like I got a slow-mo camera to check it. I'm pretty sure it hit the ceiling. I really don't know where it's at. Oh my gosh. Wow, that is still warm. Well, at least the handle still works. <laughs> what the heck? Is it the pin that came out? Uh, how can I break this more? So I got this plastic part here. Then these two side plates are aluminum and I'd like to break it. I don't know if I can do that because I'd have to drill a hole through here in order to put the soft shackle or whatever through that pin. I think the pin would break before these plates. Oh, I'm too curious. Let's just do it. Okay, so I unscrewed that and now this is separated. It won't come out, so let's try. That worked. Let's put a soft shackle right here and see if these plates break before this pin breaks. I forgot to turn on peak force. Dang it. Oh no, my soft shackle broke. Really? Dang it. Let's try this again. Okay. Interesting, the plastic that's in a Grigri, this is totally screwing up my soft shackle. So that's a bummer. Ooh, that is really cool, that pin and how it's, how it's in there. Okay, and then this plate. So basically the eyes just don't break, right? It's too weak on the back end and the pins that hold even the camming unit will come out first. Some more carnage for the museum studio wall. Shall we uh, break the Beal birdie now? I'd like to interrupt this program real quick to bring up our sponsor, you. Uh, you guys have really helped make all this possible. Uh, Venmo and PayPal, a lot of people will just spot me 20 bucks, uh, sometimes even 100 bucks, which is super rad. And then my patrons, donate about one or two dollars per episode for the higher content episodes not the monday stuff that i kind of just throw out for the algorithm so if you guys want to get involved if this really helps you understand your gear a little bit better or you just like nerding out on stuff with me uh please consider donating a hundred percent of your donations go back into this channel i try to update you guys every six months with where the money's gone uh right now i'm hemorrhaging cash because we're building the lab out but i have some really neat ideas after the like infrastructure is done what to do with uh, future donations. So uh, really appreciate you guys getting involved. All right, let's get to the birdie test. The birdie goes from 8.5 to 10.5. So let's start with the 8.5. 3.58. And if I hang on to it, nothing. 3.77 is the highest I can get. So the birdie says right there, 8.5 to 10.5 millimeters. We can go to the 10 millimeter now to see if the better performance slips lower or higher. And what I found with this unit is it goes from locked to unlocked really fast. So it kind of scared me when I was using it, but maybe I just haven't used it well or long enough to get familiar with it. What do you guys think of this? Because this is new to me. I've always used Grigri's.
Wait, what broke? I heard something break and I don't see what broke. We're at 9.95 right now. Oh, sick. So these are fun results. This is what makes slack snap worth it. Basically did this at 9.95 kilonewtons. Oh, that is sweet. <laughs> this is Jam City. So we can see here how this has a focal point right there and it pinches it, whereas the Grigri has more of a curved thing. So when I do open this up, you can see how it goes from super, super tight to open really fast. So I'm pretty happy with the strength retention of the birdie, but strength really isn't the issue. Nobody's, I think, ever died because these things break. It's because the blayer isn't doing their job or something. So let's try to actually break this unit and I will not stand next to it while it happens. Same setup, we got it locked off there. We're gonna use the pit rope. Eleven point eight nine was the most strength I got out of an eleven millimeter rope. So this is what I was expecting for the Grigri, -gri. and this thing's pretty strong too. Like this is this is no joke, but that pinching action just really really affects the strength of the rope. This is the other side of it. I could try to put a soft shackle in there and just see if I can rip the camming unit out of this for science. Soft shackle in both sides, totally realistic. <laughs> Give it up for a soft shackle. Even this damaged one is amazing. Oh yeah, that is so satisfying. What a great way to start the day. Where's the guts? Oh, well, no, that's just one of the guts. I think I'm gonna be looking for this for a while. Oh, here's another piece. Wow, this stuff went everywhere. I almost gave up, but I did find at the last second all the pieces. Is that considered reverse engineering? <laughs> 